Hello, welcome to this R Studio tutorial in which I introduce some simple graphical routines. To begin with, let's introduce some data. I'm going to define the variable maxd as 10. That's the maximum number of uh, observations, the data points that we have. And our data will comprise 10 values for stalks and 10 values for babies. Now let's allocate to these vectors the specific numbers and for this I'm going to use a loop. I'm going to go from i is equal to 1 all the way through to max d. So I'm going to go i is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 all the way up to 10 and then each time setting the ith element. So here we are and here the ith element for the stalks is a number drawn from a normal distribution with a mean i times 100 and a standard deviation of 10. Likewise let the vector babies whose elements i have a mean of i times 10 and a standard deviation of 10 be set like that. We'll just close that bracket now and if we want to plot the relationship between stalks and babies then we can use the default plotting uh, function which is simply plot. So we go plot stalks of babies. Now sometimes when we have a continuous response and a continuous predictor we may wish to draw a line which uh, most closely fits that uh, relationship and uh, here's how we would do that. It's with abline where we fit the linear model uh, between babies and stalks and abline will simply draw the fitted model onto that graph. Now let's say we've got some new stalk data collected uh, in the current year. Uh, of course one way is to simply uh, write it down as a new vector for new stalk data and here are new data on the number of children born. We may wish to plot these data on the same graph and how would we do that? Well we can simply use points to draw existing data points uh, on uh, uh, current graphs. So here we are points for new stalk data against new baby data and just to uh, show that we can distinguish them well, we are putting uh, red coloured dots and we're filling in those dots by choosing a symbol PCH equals 19 which gives us filled dots. Now of course we can fit a model to just these new data uh, in very much the same way. We can have uh, abline here uh, where this time we're fitting a linear model between the new baby data and the uh, new stalk data and just to keep the colours constant I'm uh, referring to uh, that uh, colour as colour red here. Now in some cases it may be useful to uh, define using a legend what these individual points are referring to and there are a number of ways to do that. Uh, the simplest is simply to call up legend as part of a graphical function and uh, here is one way of placing that legend uh, here. What I've done is uh, use the locator which will allow me here to work out broadly where I would like the relationship to go and then click and it's there. We have here the old data, new data as the text for the legend. The different symbols, uh, whether it's open or full, as the uh, as uh, 1 or 19 for the PCH, and of course we've got black or red uh, for the colour. Now sometimes it's of use to actually uh, draw two graphs on the same individual graph uh, rather than one. How would we do that? 
Well, the easiest way to do that is with a, a simple graphical uh, routine here, which I'm going to be calling up. It's simply uh, par. Par sets the parameters of any uh, graphs. And here what we have is subsequently we are going to have a matrix uh, plot of graphs uh, with one row and two columns. And what I'm going to do, I'll omit the uh, legend uh, the next time, but I'm going to draw one of these uh, sets of graphs uh, simply again. Uh, here we are, the stalks and babies, uh, along with the uh, new data, just so that you can see it in one set of um, uh, uh, one area of that graphic plot. So uh, here we have the very first uh, part of that overall uh, graph set here is the original graph. But we can use that par function to set a range of other attributes of the graphs that we draw. So for instance, uh, here are some uh, common ones that we might uh, choose. We can set uh, LAS, we can set the label uh, to actually go horizontal rather than vertical as it's described uh, by the default. We can also, for example, uh, have here the label sizes uh, increased uh, by about 20% and here we can have the numbers themselves increased by 10%. Now after doing this, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, the same graph. And of course, most of the time we would have a different graph uh, plotted uh, here and uh, let me uh, run that now here. But you'll notice that uh, these are with the slightly different uh, increased in size text and uh, of course what we can see here are that the labels are now left horizontally. So you've seen a variety of different things here in this very simple introduction to graphics. First of all you've seen the default plotting function but then you've seen how we can use various arguments of those plotting functions. Uh, we can set uh, through par, uh, for example, how many individual plots we would like in a given screen, but also the sizes, fonts, and uh, orientation of the labels.